Hi everybody, Dr. Mark here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the cerebellum. Now to begin with, I want you to think about this scenario. You're going to a friend's place to help them move. They point to the corner of the house where there's a box and they say, hey, can you pick that box up, chuck it in the truck for me? Now, they say to you, look, this box is heavy, so be careful. Now, as you're walking over to the box, you're thinking, okay, it's a heavy box, gonna have to utilize all my muscles, bend with my knees, not with my back. You get over there, you grab the box, and then you pick the box up and you realize that the box is actually empty. Now, what is stopping you from flipping yourself backwards? Because you'd prepared yourself to pick up a really heavy box. Well, the thing that stops you from flipping back is your cerebellum. What the cerebellum does is it takes your intended movement and then it takes the actual movement and then it calculates the error between those two. Once it calculates that error, it then fine tunes that motor movement. So what the cerebellum does is it fine tunes motor movement and it does it through a couple of different functions. So while it does fine tune motor movement, you could divide what the cerebellum does into, it helps fine tune muscle tone, coordination, and balance and posture. These are the main functions of the cerebellum. Muscle tone, coordination, balance and posture. Now before we go into more detail about the function, let's talk about the anatomy a little bit. So the cerebellum, we've drawn up here, we've got the cerebrum, which is the main part of our brain, you know, our two cerebral hemispheres. This is a lateral view. So we've got the cerebrum, we've got the brain stem, which is midbrain, pons, medulla, and we've got the cerebellum sitting here. So you can see the cerebellum sits inferior to the cerebrum, posterior to the brainstem, and the part of the skull that it sits within is the posterior cranial fossa, and it's separated from the occipital lobe of the cerebrum by the tentorium cerebelli. So, if we were to take the cerebellum and the brainstem and pull it out and have a look at it, we've performed a sagittal view, so we're looking into it from the side, from a lateral view, and we can see a couple of things. Firstly, it is folded like the brain, like the cerebrum itself. So it does have these gyri and sulci, you know, bump up, dips down and so forth. It does have a cortex, an outer region and a medulla, again, like the cerebrum. But a couple of things is that if you were to look at it under a section, there looks like there is a branching, like a tree that comes out from this aspect of the brainstem. And that's called the arbor vitae, which means tree of life. Now you can also see we've got the brainstem here with the midbrain pons and the medulla, and you can see part of one of the ventricles here. So if we were to divide the cerebellum up anatomically, you can divide it into three lobes. So these three lobes, first of which we've got the anterior lobe, second is all this here is the posterior lobe, and then this lobe underneath here, this is called the flocculonodular lobe. Great name, isn't it? Flocular, flocculonodular lobe. These are the three anatomical lobes. You can see the flocculonodular lobe sits underneath. So if we were to take the cerebrum, a cerebellum, sorry, and look at it from a posterior view, like we've done here, what we've actually done is we've taken that flocular nodular lobe and we've pulled it out so we can see it. So this is the flocular nodular lobe here. The flocular nodular lobe sitting under here. Now, if we were to find the anterior and posterior lobes, we could very roughly separate them out like this, where we've got the anterior and posterior lobes. Now again, these are anatomical divisions, right? One, two, three. But if we were to look at it functionally, you can actually separate the cerebellum a little bit differently. Firstly, we're gonna begin with the flocular nodular lobe. And the reason why is because the flocular nodular lobe anatomically is distinct, but also functionally, it's quite distinct. And the reason why is because it deals predominantly with vestibular movement. So this is referring to the vestibular system. 
So balance. So I want you to think about the vestibular system. Information coming from the vestibular cochlear nerve, right, from the inner ear, this is cranial nerve eight. So information coming from your balance areas of your inner ear is sending information to the flocular nodular lobe. So I could draw up an arrow here and say that information from cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve, is going to the flocular nodular lobe. And so another name for this area is the vestibulocerebellum. So this can also be recognized as the vestibulocerebellum. Vestibulo cerebellum. And what does it deal with? It predominantly, if it's going to be cranial nerve eight, it's going to be dealing with balance and posture. What did I say? Balance and posture. So let's write this down. I'll just write balance. Okay. Now, when we move up, what you're going to find is that when we to, uh, to break these anatomical lobes, the anterior and posterior up into their functional areas, we don't do it in this way, we actually do it in this more vertical way. And this is how it works. Firstly, you can see that there's two hemispheres of the cerebellum and it's separated out or connected by this area in the middle called the vermis. So let's actually label that the vermis. Now importantly, the vermis and its areas immediately next door which are called the intermediate zones, intermediate zones, the vermis and the intermediate zones are its own functional area, right? Now, let me tell you why. Because there is actually a topographical map of the body placed on the vermis and the intermediate zones. Just like we've got the somatosensory homunculus and motor homunculus on our cerebellum, we have a homunculus on the vermis and intermediate zones. So let's have a look. What we've got is it looks a little bit like this. A little bit like an alien. It's upside down, right? And here are the eyes. Now we've got one here as well in this position. So what can you see? First thing is the axial musculature, so the musculature of the neck and the trunk, the head, neck, trunk, for example, all lies within the vermis. So that means when it comes to fine tuning, coordinating muscle tone, of the head, neck, and trunk, it's all coming from the vermis. When we deal with coordinating and fine tuning the musculature of the limbs, this is all coming from the intermediate zone, right? That's important. Okay, another thing is that information, we said information coming from the vestibular cochlear nerve is going to here to deal with balance. Information coming from these parts of the body, this is gonna be proprioception, right? So telling you where your arms are in their space, telling you how bent a joint is, telling you how contracted a muscle is, all this type of proprioceptive information from the limbs, intermediate zone, and from the trunk, head, neck, and trunk, vermis, it's coming from the proprioceptors to these areas. Right, so I can draw up an arrow and say proprioception. So proprioception is going to these areas here. For the limbs there and for the head, neck and trunk there. All right, now, well, the other thing is that this flocular nodular zone is also known as the vestibular cochlea, uh, vestibulo cerebellum. This area has another name. It's called the spino cerebellum because it's all coming through the spinal nerves to go to these areas, right? So let's rename it. The spino cerebellum. The spino cerebellum is also this area here, including the vermis and intermediate zones. All right, the last area are these most lateralized areas. And these most lateralized areas, I'll first give you the name is called cerebrocerebellum, 
And that should tell you where it's getting its information from. It's getting it from the cerebrum, from the cerebral cortices. So this area deals with very, very fine tuning of motor information, skillful task, playing the piano, doing very important tasks like that. Right there, very skillful tasks. So what we find is that information coming in to these most lateralized regions are coming from the primary motor cortex, the pre-motor cortex. Now, together, you got planning and actually thinking about doing that motor movement. That's coming in here, so it can be fine-tuned, right? It's gonna have information coming in from the primary and secondary somatosensory cortex, so information about sensation. This is important because we need to know information about the musculature of the body in order to make a decision. And information coming from the visual system, specifically about objects that are moving in our vision, is all coming into this cerebrocerebellar, these lateralized areas, all right? Re really important. So, overall, what we're gonna find is this. I said, balance and posture, vestibular cerebellum. Coordination is going to be mainly here because it's really skillful tasks, right? Coming from the motor, premotor, somatosensory, visual, and tone, how contracted or relaxed the muscle is, is gonna be coming from the vermis and intermediate zones, and so we can pop tone in this area here. And this is how we can functionally divide the cerebellum. So hopefully this gives you a nice summary of the anatomy of the cerebellum and the physiology.